Hey guys, today we're finally sitting down and unboxing and swatching the Van Gogh watercolor palette that came in my spring 2022 watercolor snacks box. I'm really looking forward to putting this to the full Natto Soup Studio art supply review test the gamut of tests that we use as our student grade showdown. And I look forward to giving you guys some feedback on what I think of the set. Has this set, well rather, has Van Gogh tube watercolors found redemption? Or am I still as disappointed as I was initially when I reviewed them a while back? There's only one way to find out. So let's unbox and swatch this Van Gogh pocket palette. Hey there art nerds! Those of you who regularly watch the channel remember this from the watercolor snacks unboxing I did recently. I promised you guys I would give it a full unboxing swatch and include it in my student grade showdown so I am here to do just that. I did already swatch it and I am going to include footage from that but I thought it would be helpful to give you guys some updated information and some updated footage with you know a little bit better lighting and a little bit better videography. So while I am going to include segments from the initial unboxing of the watercolor box, it's not going to be the whole thing. I'm just going to use that to help illustrate points. So if you're interested in watercolor snacks, I highly recommend you watch some of the live streams I've done. I don't buy every watercolor snacks box because that can be kind of expensive. I think it is a seasonal subscription box from Art Snacks, so I think you get it four times a year. And I feel like at full price it's around $80, but I've, I never buy it at full price. I always wait until there's a sale. So in this watercolor snacks, we did receive a special edition Van Gogh watercolor palette. And I was kind of excited about that. Van Gogh watercolors are student grade watercolors. So that fits in well with the student grade showdown. I'm unwrapping all of the half pans live and kind of going over the color information and what the labels actually say. But we're gonna go over that together again. And this is a 12 color set and it's kind of a, when I say a unique color combination, there's actually another set very similar to this one with just a couple of the colors swapped out, but this was done for Art Snacks. So the only way you can get this particular set in this palette is through Art Snacks. This is what the inside of the package looks like. This is an art snacks or slash watercolor snacks exclusive from Van Gogh. So it's more of a specific selection of half pans, but you can find a variety of Van Gogh watercolor half pans on Dick Blick and they do do other deals. In fact, I think they have another collaboration with watercolor snacks coming up. So as you guys can see, I already unwrapped these. Each one came wrapped in a paper wrapper. I definitely prefer to see paper wrappers over plastic wrappers or even foil wrappers because these are more likely to compost and decompose. They have the pigment name. So in this instance, it would be permanent yellowish green. They have the light fast. So in this instance, it would be three plus sides. They have the opacity, which in this case would be transparent. They have the color number in this case would be 633. They have, I guess this is further light fast level down here, LF1. And then they also have the pigment information down here at the bottom where it's most likely be torn. So in this instance, it's hard to read, but I believe it says PY154 and PG7. And I've already transposed all of the pigment information and I will read that for you guys as part of the time lapse. There are only 12 colors in this set, which makes this one of our smaller student grade showdowns. And I have reviewed Van Gogh watercolors here on the channel be before. So I'll include a little brief snippet. But generally, in my opinion, I'm not the biggest fan of Van Gogh. I find them to be a little bit too opaque for my taste, which honestly seems to be kind of a thing for like German or um, Holland style watercolors, like that kind of area, they tend to go more for opacity, which is fine. Um, fewer layers is probably the best way to go about it. 
These are their student grade quality. They also make Rembrandt. I have also reviewed Rembrandt for you guys. I will include uh, a snippet of that with some voiceover just to kind of catch you guys up for that as well. These half pans are removable using the little cute travel watercolor brush that they include. You can just pop them out and reorder them. I like that. I like this style of palette. I think it's very clever and very handy. I think it's well geared towards a travel palette. So my negative opinions about Van Gogh watercolors mostly seem to be a personal taste thing than an actual flaw in the watercolor. But if you're looking for watercolors that have more of a punch and more saturation and more optical brighteners and you're not necessarily interested in doing a lot of layering, these could be a good affordable option for you. So we are going to treat this like a regular student grade showdown. That means we're going to do swatching, we're going to do color mixing, and we're going to do our wet into wet test. I'm also going to compare these to some of the other student grade watercolors that I've reviewed during this showdown. So hopefully that'll kind of complete this. And if, if you guys know me, I'm definitely an art supply completionist. I can't help myself. I'm also going to link the watercolor snacks live stream in case you missed it. And if you caught it, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me that evening. I had so much fun. It was so good to see you guys again. And I plan on resuming live streams once we finish painting the house and I have my evenings back. So Cross your fingers for me that that will be sooner rather than later. I'm going to do today's unbox and swatch on the same kind of paper. I do every unbox and swatch on Pinky. We're going to be swatching on the Blick Premier Cold Press Cotton Rag Watercolor Paper. And this stuff can get kind of expensive and I use a lot of it, especially when reviewing these sort of things. So a huge shout out to my awesome, amazing, ever supportive patrons over on Patreon because they make the ability to not only purchase reviews, but uh, purchase art supplies to review. Sorry. They not only make it possible to purchase art supplies to review for you guys, but they also help me afford consumables like what you see here. One of the first things I need to do when I am going to swatch watercolors is we need to lay down some black lines to test opacity. And I am going to use a Copic to do that. As with a lot of other student grade watercolors that utilize optical brighteners to make the colors more appealing in the pans and obviously these are very appealing in the pans when I sp spritz them with water you start to see like much 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 lighter areas as it absorbs the water uh, that's noticeable in some of the reds the greens the pinks that sort of thing it's not the kiss of death, but it is a red flag towards optical brighteners. And really what that's going to mean in most instances is you're just kind of limited in how much you can mix them or how much you can layer them before they start to turn to mud. I apologize in advance for the blurry footage, but this gives me a chance to talk about the colors and the pigment information. So we have Azo Yellow Light, PY164, PW6, LF1, three plus signs and semi-opaque, Matter Lake Light, PR264, PR254, LF2, three plus signs and transparent, Hooker Green Deep, PG7, LF2, three plus signs and transparent, Quinacridone Purple Red, PV55, LF2, 3 plus signs and transparent. Turquoise Blue, PB15, PG7, LF2, 3 plus signs and transparent. Rose, PR122, LF3, 2 plus signs and semi transparent. Pyrrole Orange, PO23, LF2, 3 plus signs and transparent. Sap Green, PY129, PG7, LF2, 3 plus signs and transparent. Permanent Red Deep, PR149, LF2, 3 plus signs and transparent. Permanent Yellowish Green, PY154, PG7, LF1, 3 plus signs and transparent. Permanent Blue Violet, PV23, LF4, <laughs> 2 plus signs and transparent. Thalo Green, PG7, PY154, PY LF1, 3 plus signs and transparent. We also have a synthetic tack along brush, size six round, and a removable mixing tray. And we have moved on to the better footage, the better color grading, and the better paper. 
So swatching on the Blick Studio Cotton Rag Paper, which I think gives these their best chance at performing well. The colors are pretty vibrant and it's a fun color selection that reminds me of a botanical selection, but there isn't much granulation or interesting color effects. There aren't any neutrals in this selection or any blues, strangely enough. Obviously though, this is meant to be a special collaborative color selection and not like a mixing set. So while I give my swatches a chance to dry fully, we're gonna move on to the color mixing part of this field tester. Unbox and swatch, sorry. So since we have kind of an unusual selection of colors, I'm not really looking to be able to make secondary colors the way I would with a normal unbox and swatch. I'm really just seeing how well some of these colors blend together to make additional colors. And I'm going to utilize the mixing surface that actually came with this palette because that's part of it. Now, you might be wondering why I'm not really utilizing the tiniest travel, it's not the tiniest, but it's a pretty tiny little travel brush. And my rationale for this is it is a synthetic. I tend to not really like synthetics. I find water control to be annoying with synthetics. So while I think the brush design is really neat, I give them kudos to how compact it is and how well it breaks down and how you can use this part, not only to score your paper if you so wish, but to, gross. Also lift up your mixing surfaces or lift up your half pans. Um, I just am not a fan of synthetic watercolor brushes and I don't think it would really allow me to be as fair as possible. Now, this just goes to show you that if you are traveling with this set, the way it nests, you can see there's a little indent lip here I believe you're gonna get paint all over your mixing surface if you shut it before it has a chance to dry. So if you are using this for plain air painting, you definitely wanna make sure it's had a chance to dry out before you pack it away. So when color mixing, many of these colors have opacity to them and while they mix fine initially, I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing multiple layers with these. I was able to mix a nice range of colors, including some that would serve as blues and several decent neutrals. So you can do some color mixing with this set. The convenience colors are a little bit strange though, but it is mixable. The palette is easily removable and it would benefit from a dip under running water for easiest cleaning. Obviously, I decided to do it the hard way and I believe many of these colors are quite staining, especially on plastic. Both color mixing and cleaning up the mixing palette were definitely interesting and I have to keep reminding myself that this isn't meant to be a mixing palette, it's really meant to be a special color palette, an exclusive selection of colors. So I'm trying not to hold it to the same standards that I've held Van Gogh in the past since we're not really meant to be doing a whole lot of color mixing with this set. At least that's kind of how I feel. It really also kind of, kind of reminds me of the Core High Chroma palette. I think that was also included in a watercolor snacks years ago. Now I really like the High Chroma palette and I found it to be surprisingly mixable, but the, it's more just like the color selection in this range. Now, if it had a Quinn Gold, that would definitely make it pretty similar to the High Chroma range. So. The next text, next test we're going to do is the wet into wet test, which 
always ends up revealing more than I expect it to reveal. So what we're going to do for this test is I have a secondary block of Blick cold press cotton rag watercolor paper. We are going to just saturate this with water and then we're going to start dabbing in the colors and let the colors tell us what they want us to know about how they handle, how well they mix wet into wet, whether we get any harsh optical brightener lines like we did with the Arteza set, that sort of thing. So these paints are kind of sticky, as you guys will see in a moment, and they kind of glob up on my brush. So color control, like using a palette, is really important. They also seem to get used up fast and don't seem to benefit from pre-activation or allowing water to sit on the half pans. Colors intermixed freely and readily and are very saturated when wet. I don't think any of these colors are innately granulating, so you don't get a lot of visual interest. Everything has kind of a degree of sameness to them. The colors themselves have that sort of synthetic feel due to the color selection and lack of granulation that is both kind of flat and boring to me. Our wet into wet test has had a chance to dry and I'm not really seeing anything that's super concerning. It did dry a lot more desaturated than it was when it was wet. And to an extent, you can expect that with watercolors. They're usually gonna dry a little less vibrant, a little less intense. I feel like this is pretty significant, but not anything I wouldn't expect from student grade watercolors. I am not seeing any weird halos or anything that might indicate too many or too much of a use of optical brighteners, but I'm also not seeing any granulation. Everything is, I feel like everything is kind of the same amount of staining. And these are all bright, fun, intense colors, but it would have been nice to have some granulating or some other interesting effects colors in this mix, especially because Van Gogh makes the dusk colors. So a set like this that might have one or two dusk colors and it would be pretty fun, I think. So not really anything I wasn't expecting to see, especially since I have talked about Van Gogh in the past, but I figured since I received this in the watercolor snacks, I might as well take a look at it for you guys and talk to you guys about it. So all that's really left in terms of testing is to do the lift test on our original swatches. There's definitely a kind of sameness to these colors. While they're all really bright, they're all the same amount of granulating and basically the same amount of liftable and staining. There's just not a lot of interesting going on here. Not really surprising to me. These are pretty staining. Everything is finely ground, so that makes sense. What I think the lifting is, is just the optical brighteners not really adhering to the paper, or maybe even though they dried for several hours, they didn't dry enough. But it's enough to make me a little bit leery of doing too much mixing or too many layers with these particular paints. But I think that's something I touched on in my original Van Gogh watercolors unbox and swatch. And I believe I have a field test for it, but I might not. And if I don't, if I can dig up my old palette, if I didn't give it away to somebody else, um, I may do a field test using both sets to paint something to kind of demonstrate some of the areas where there may be hiccups. As I already mentioned, this is one of Van Gogh's sets. I looked on the Dick Blick site and they didn't have this particular set, but they do have a variety of sets. Some of them are pretty close to this. Van Gogh watercolors are available in tubes and in half pans. It kind of just depends on your preferred method of working. And this is considered a student grade paint. This is Royal Talon student grade line with Rembrandt being their more professional line. And I have reviewed their kind of more traditional colored 12 piece half pan set here on the channel in the past. I've also reviewed the Rembrandt watercolors and after a quick search, I realized I don't have a field test. So I may need to see if I can dig up the other half pans if I didn't give them away and do a field test with those just for, you know, completionist sake. So I'm going to insert the original unbox and swatch for the Van Goghs as well as the Van Gogh dust colors as well as the Rembrandt unbox and swatch and the Rembrandt field test and kind of just talk about them a little bit just to give you guys kind of a baseline. 
So this is a pretty OG Lucas review. I have both the palette and some of the tubes so that I could compare them. And I found the colors to be more opaque than I really would have wanted. And I didn't really notice that the tubes were like leagues better than the half pans. They are more economical though, because they cost about the same as the half pans and you can fill them about three times. So that could be a good way to kind of top up your Lucas palette. I'm going to link this original review down in the description below if you guys are interested and you want to check it out. I do like this col color selection a little bit better than the other, but strangely this one doesn't include a whole lot of neutrals either. And the travel brush in terms of actually painting with it is a little bit of a joke. It's a little bit stiff, it's a lot small, and it's kind of scrubby. But y'all, it's the thought that counts and it would work decently well as a liner for maybe your line art. That said, I'm still totally charmed by the format. Now, the Van Van Gogh dust colors were sent to me by my friend Kabocha, and these I like. These are fun. These are interesting. So they have staining colors. There's a lot of phthalo and a lot of quin and a lot of magenta going on here. And they've added PBK11, which is a granulating black pigment, so that you get that staining effect as well as that granulating black effect. These are just really cool. And while they're not the first super granulating product on the market, they're a lot of fun. I found them to be kind of comparable to the Boko Undo Sumi-esque set, but with more granulation. In this review, I also mixed up some dupes in case you wanted to make your own at home. And I will link this review in the description for you guys as well, in case you're interested in checking it out. I am going to be playing with these dust colors more in the future. I've got plans for these, and I've got a big super granulating showdown coming up. Then finally we have the Rembrandt set. So this is the professional version of this. Is, so Royal Talons makes these and this is the professional line. So you've got Van Gogh and then you've got Rembrandt. Look, I don't know how they decide which artists, which dead male artists get to be student grade and which dead male artists get to be professional grade, but that's what you got. So these are well packaged. They're very attractive. They come with the same adorable little brush, even though you don't necessarily need it to pry anything out. I didn't love these. I thought I would. I thought these were going to be leagues better. They are better. I just didn't love them. These are more opaque than I'm really used to or what I really want from watercolor. As a watercolor comic artist and illustrator, I am big on layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. And I find that these kind of watercolors just don't really work well for that much layering. That said, they are very bright and very saturated. And if you're like get in, get out kind of watercolor artist with limited layers, these could be a better fit for you. So here's a clip from the field test for the Rembrandt just to kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about and to kind of show you guys how I typically handle watercolors. So like I said, I am a lot of thin layers and a lot of building things up. And I decided to use a timer to show you guys how long these kinds of things actually take. So when I do these field tests, I generally try to handle the paints in a way that's going to be flattering to the paints because I don't want to make ugly art, but also in a way that is natural to me. I don't really like going super out of my way to figure out how to make the paints work. This allows me to be able to talk about where the paints kind of fall short for me and where they kind of succeed. So I will link this for you guys as well in case you like the art or you want to check it out or you want to hear my thoughts in depth. But generally, I wasn't really a big fan of the Rembrandt watercolors and it's not something I would be using in the future. So on Blick, tubes of Van Gogh watercolors are 322 each and they don't have series so they're all kind of the same price point which is pretty common for student grade watercolors. They're all made with kind of substitutes for more expensive pigments when more expensive pigments would typically be used and just raise the price of a tube. They might opt to use a hue or a late pigment or some other kind of substitute or just not have that color and just have something kind of sort of similar. They don't sell the individual half pans but the sets so the 12 color sets are around some of them are more expensive some of them are less expensive 33 37 on Blick let's talk about student grade or professional grade watercolors that I think are pretty competitive or might recommend in lieu of this set and keep in mind that the price point we're kind of at is between 33 37 to 46 41 
So this is a 12 color set. And as I said before, I really like this little clamshell palette. I think it's really cute. I like that it's easy to replace the half pans. It does take up a little more space than necessary, but in general, I really like the format for this. I think it's really cute. So some of the watercolors that I think are comparable to this set are the Meiliang pigments. And if you have spent any time hanging out with me here on the channel, you guys have heard me talk about these a lot. These are from uh, Shanghai AON, sorry. The company that manufactures Paul Rubens. Sometimes when I have two thoughts at one time, my brain wanna shove them together into one word. So I had to be careful there. But uh, these are their student grade. This is the 36 half pan set. You guys have seen it, get a lot of use, get a lot of love. It is not as reusable as the Van Gogh set, but I do really like the colors. There is some granulation to some of these colors and this set just handles like a champ. Like it, it really handles like it's much more expensive than it is. Now the price point for this can be around $20 on up. It kind of just depends on where Make Liang Pigments is on Amazon or AliExpress that day. So you may want to use Camel 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 or Honey to price track and get the lowest price if you're not in a hurry. I also think this set is somewhat similar to the Rosa Galleria watercolors. Now I don't love, love these watercolors. These are more opaque. This is what I mean when I say like Eastern European style of watercolors, a little bit more opaque, a little heavier bodied, kind of reminds me of the Van Gogh. It also reminds me of the Lucas watercolors, which I don't have anymore, but I will talk about them a little bit. But these also have a lot of really beautiful color to them. With these, you get full pans, and this is around $36 for a 21 whole pan set. And much like the Meiliang pigments, the price can kind of vary, and they do have different sets available. This is pretty similar to the White Knights set, but I would say the Van Gogh set is more similar to the student grade old St. Petersburg sets that kind of morphed into White Knights in a way. Uh, there's some debate over that, but it, it reminds me of like the big Yarka St. Petersburg sets that used to be available. And I used to really like those sets and I've talked about those here on the channel as well. I still have one, it is just packed away somewhere. But I would say those might be a little nicer quality than this if you wanna do a lot of layers and really kind of build up your color. These are not so great for building up that layers and building up those color. So next we have, this is very similar to the Mei Liang's. This is the Aowin set made by the same company. Just a little bit of a different form factor. Also pretty similar to the Van Gogh set. Similar in terms of price point as well. This is also their 36 color set like my Mei Liang pigments. You do get more paint in the Aowin and they are in these cute little square pans. So a little bit more reusable, refillable than the Mei Liang pigments, but you guys can see really bright, saturated color. And they tend to be around the same price point as the Mei Liang pigments. So I tend to refer to the Mei Liang and this interchangeably. So it kind of just depends on what you like and how much you're willing to spend. Also kind of comparable in my opinion are the Montmartre watercolors. So this is an 18 half pan set. I haven't had a chance to field test this set, but I was actually pretty impressed by what I saw from this little pocket palette. So these are similar in terms of size. They're almost the same size. They both come with a travel watercolor brush. This one is a water brush. This is just a travel watercolor brush. This has a large plain mixing surface with some removable water wells right here. This one has the mixing surface built in. You can pry it out and then use the lid. You could even paint the lid white and then use that as a mixing surface as well. This doesn't have removable half pants. This is kind of similar to the Mei Liang in that it's in an inexpensive plastic liner. You could gut this set. What I really like about this set though as a travel set is the ring on the back is really well made. And the Van Gogh set doesn't have anything like that, which is, which is fine. I'm not actually, if I'm doing plein air painting, I'm usually not holding my palette in my hand. I like to have it, I, I have hand tremors, so I prefer to uh, work on a hard, stable surface. So that doesn't really make much of a difference for me, but I do think it's nice and I like how it folds away so this can sit flat on the table. I also think the Van Goghs are fairly comparable to 
the Mozart Como Rebbe. This isn't the metallic set. This is the regular set. So this is like a Gensai style palette. And as you guys can see, I have used the heck out of this. Um, these are full pans. They do last a long time. I really did use the heck out of this palette. It's gotten a lot of love. And even for my most used colors, there's still a little bit of paint left in there. I actually don't know if you can get refills for this. It, would, it wouldn't surprise me if you couldn't because Mozart is white labeling this from someone else. Um, this looks pretty similar to a set that uh, Jerry's Artorama sells, the Soho Reworkable Watercolor set. And it's pretty similar just from looking at it to a Paul Rubens student grade set. So they might all be white labeling from the same place. But I like this little set. Now, obviously, this set isn't so little. It does take up a fair amount of desk space. It has a pretty big footprint, but you do get a lot of color with it. Moving on to not quite as comparable, but I think similar in terms of price and quality and expectations. We have the Phoenix watercolors. So I have been told that these might be the company that Cotman is white labeling from. And I actually have a newer Cotman set so I can do a head to head comparison in the near future. I really, really wanted to like these paints. Um, I, at the time of the unboxing swatch though, they disappointed me a bit. Uh, I'm hoping that the field test will kind of offer some redemption. Sometimes actually handling the paints can do a lot for them. But the Phoenix watercolors are in a similar price range. And this is the 48 color set. Next up are the Mungyos. Everybody and their mother. White labels from, from Mungyo. So if you have used Jane Davenport, if you've used Primo Marketing, you've used the Mungyo. Um, and this is just a pretty common, pretty uh, easy to find sort of student grade set. This is the 48 half pan set. So it's a larger set. The colors are very saturated, but they are also kind of gritty. And I do think they have a fair amount of optical brighteners in them, but probably about as much as the Van Gogh. And then we have the Superior set. And I'm pretty sure Etcher is white labeling from Superior for these. This is not my favorite Superior set, by the way, but I thought it was pretty comparable to this. All of these brands have really bright, saturated colors. They could work really well for people who want kind of a punch of color in the beginning. So the back travel ring is just a joke. But honestly, my Daily Driver watercolor palette is the same palette, just black. So clearly that doesn't stop me. It doesn't slow me down. Um, it's just a point that I'm sharing with you guys because some have a good travel ring, some don't. And this one doesn't even have a travel ring. But this is pretty lightweight and it's not gonna rattle around. It's pretty solidly built. Whereas a lot of these metal pa palettes, when I've flown with them, they've popped open, they set off the metal detectors, they rattle around. So they're not necessarily so great to travel with. Um, another bright, super saturated set of colors, not necessarily, this one has some granulation with some of these colors. Um, but I just, I think it's kind of comparable-ish to what Van Gogh is doing at around the same price point. That's kind of why I pulled a bunch of these out. It was just to show you guys some other student grade art or, I mean, they say master level, but I would say these are student grade. So the one not student grade that I pulled is the Paul Rubens 24 piece half pan set. It's still in the same ballpark. This is $45, but mine came with a really nice quill that I use all the time. Um, you may be able to find it for cheaper. That's again, and I have no sponsorship with either of these. I just like saving you guys some money, uh, setting up Camel 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 or Honey to let you know when it's at a good price point. So this is the professional grade of the Mei Liang and the Aowen. I really like their paints. Um, I have a tube set of the Paul Rubens that I love even more. It's in one of those Stay Wet palettes. So the half pans are nice, good granulation, interesting color selection. Their neutrals are a little weak, but that's pretty common for a lot of these brands. For some reason, their neutrals are just not particularly good or particularly well made. But I just wanted to pull out some other student grade, similar ballpark. I mean, obviously I could pull out some Cotman and say, oh yeah, they're very similar to Cotman. They're very similar to the Lucas Studio. Um, my, <laughs> It's these kind of, and I'm not trying to just dunk on Van Gogh because they're definitely not the worst offender here, but like Sennelier's Petite Acrel set, Cotman, 
Van Gogh, all of these student grade sets that are kind of expensive for the amount of paint you get, but the quality of the paint just isn't there. And if you just spend a little bit more money, you could buy a good starter professional grade set. These really kind of poisoned me on student grade for a really long time. It wasn't until I tried the Mei Liang pigment set that I started to kind of revise how I felt about student grade and where student grade paints might play a role in my life, both as a teacher and as a watercolor comic artist. So I'm kind of coming back around. I thought it was only fair to uh, give these a second look. Uh, Van Gogh calls themselves the quality brand. They're okay. I didn't like the Rembrandts, their professional grade paints that much either. And I know that's a personal taste sort of thing. Like I don't like Schmincke all that much either, either. So it, it could just be the opacity to these kind of watercolors. It just doesn't really do it for me. So for the pros and cons, normally I like to start on a positive note and start with the cons, but today I'm going to start with the cons. And one of them is that if you like this set, you're going to have to purchase it through Art Snacks if they still have any of these available because this is supposedly an exclusive color palette done in collaboration with Watercolor Snacks. So you can't really go to like Blick and find this exact set. Now they have some fun other sets on Blick like they have this bright orange museum watercolor pocket box set. I don't know what colors constitute a museum watercolor pocket box set but I love the bright orange color. So you can get sets kind of similar to this, like you can also get the National Gallery Watercolor Pocket Box set, or their basic set of 12, which I reviewed here in the past, or their Muted Colors, or their Pinks and Violets, or their Shades of Natures, or their Metallic and Interference Colors, or their Vibrant Colors set. This is probably closest to their Vibrant Colors set. And their Vibrant, actually, now that I'm looking at their Vibrant Colors set, minus a couple colors. It's very, very similar. Their Vibrant Color set has Permanent Lemon Yellow, Transparent Yellow Medium, Pyrrole Orange, Permanent Red Light, Rose, Quinacridone Purple, Blue, Ultramarine Deep, Cerulean Blue Thalo, Turquoise Blue, Viridian, Permanent Green, Permanent Yellowish Green, and also has the Mixing Tray and the Brush. A few more yellows than this set. It's a little bit of a different color selection, but it is very similar to this set. So if you can't get this set, the Vibrant Colors set will probably scratch that itch for you guys. And I'll have a link to that, as well as I'll see if I can get a link to where you can get this set if you want it. But on Blick, it's $33.37, which for a 12 color half pan set, I think that's a little pricey. So that's my next con is that I personally think for student grade watercolors, Van Gogh is kind of expensive. I like some of the stuff they have to offer. I really like the style of palette. I wish they would do a big 12 color dusk color or um, I wish they'd dip a toe in the super granulating pool, you know? I think that could be fun. I like their dusk colors. I thought they were very interesting and they were kind of doing that I won't say before other people were doing super granulating, but they were definitely earlier in the game for that. So it'd be cool to see a special palette for that. They can call it the Becca Hilburn palette, but um, I do think they're kind of expensive for student grade watercolors, especially compared to some of the other sets that we just talked about and the amount of, well, the number of paints that you can get in some of those other sets. And also it's a student grade watercolor, so you're going to if you're used to professional grade or professional quality, you're going to have to kind of adjust your expectations. Student grade generally, generally just doesn't necessarily do all the things that a professional grade watercolor will be able to do. It's not necessarily going to mix as well. It's not necessarily going to lay, do as many layers or be as luminous. It might be more likely to get muddy or lift or kind of sticky. And these definitely get used up fast. They get very globby. You probably don't need to preactivate them. So in my opinion, student grade is often a false economy because they get used up quicker than professional grade paints and you're buying replacements or you're buying refills. And I don't know where you, I'm sure you can get replacement half pans for Van Gogh. I just don't know where to do that. <laughs> it's not Blick, but um, I'm sure if you live in Amsterdam, I think the Netherlands is Royal Talon's home country, but I 
I didn't do any research this time, so I could be wrong. I'm sure you guys will let me know. But I'm sure if you live in Europe, you could get refill pans for this. Maybe if you lived in Japan, you could get refill pans. The U.S. is just real weird about offering this kind of ongoing support so that you can continue using something you've already paid for. So that's also another con is like as cute. And to be fair, you can use, let me grab a regular half pan. Okay, so we have a cheap F Club clear half pan. I got these off of Amazon. They work in just about everything for some reason. My pry bar doesn't want to pry anymore. I may have gotten paint outside the lines. That seems like me. So I will see if I can't pry bar it out with a palette knife. I should be able to. It want, I think this is ID10 T error on my part, not on Van Gogh's part, because I think I I think I allowed it to, did I break it? <laughs> no, it's just, it's just, okay. So if you get paint outside the lines, that's another kind. You can't pry these little, little doodadders out. I took some jerry rigging, but I got one of them out, which doesn't really bode well. So we should be able to just put any, oh no, you can't just put any half pan in. These are, I mean, I'm not really surprised. Royal Talons. Yeah, they are made in Holland. That's cool. Okay, so they are small. <laughs> They're smaller than regular half pans. So we're, we're getting a little bit skimped on there. So that's also a big downside is like, even if you like this palette, if you want to refill it, you're either going, your options are, you can refill it with Van Gogh tube watercolors with the same color. Theoretically, that should not be a problem. Sometimes it's not really a good match, but it shouldn't be a problem in this instance. You could refill it with another brand's color if you wanted to, or you, I mean, you can't, that's it. Those are your options because you can't put your own half pans that you like into this palette. And I wasn't, once you get it in there, you, it's harder to get out. Okay, I got it out with my palette knife, but like I already damaged the little plastic, this thing, the pry bar. And I wasn't really being like not careful. I wasn't really using it for nefarious purposes. So that's frustrating. So since we got one out, it says Royal Talons PO Box 4, Alpadorn Holland, and then they have a color number, and in this instance, it's not not printed accurately. So that's that's definitely a thing. So I feel like that summarizes my cons. So my pros, I really like the black palette. I think it's really cool. I think the orange palettes that they have are really cool. I wish they would do just more colorful palettes. Those of you who've watched my reviews, you guys know I'm a sucker for colorful art supplies and I don't understand why palettes have to be in boring colors. So it's always fun when it's made with something more fun and colorful than just black or white. Another pro is I do actually think, even though I was literally just complaining about it, I do think this palette system is neat. I like that you can easily remove your mixing surfaces. I like the little travel brush. I like that you can use the pry bar to remove the hat pans. All of that is really pretty cool. It should snap shut pretty securely. Mine doesn't really click. Um, the one I've had before clicked pretty well. So I think it might just be this one. Um, the fact that you can just press the button to open it is a little easier on my arthritis than some of the pocket boxes I've seen in the past. And I think the color palette on this is really fun. That brings me around to another con though. There are no granulating colors. Everything in this palette is milled to about the same sameness, which is visually kind of boring. It feels kind of flat. It's also, I don't really understand the logic behind this special assortment of colors. Like what's it meant to represent? What demographic are they going for? Is it the watercolor snacks? Like, is it meant to represent watercolor snacks? Is it supposed to be for botanical painting? Is it supposed to be for what? Um, because it's not really your like standard 12 color mixing palette and you don't really have um, any blues at all. You have kind of like a really pretty teal, but you don't have any blues. So it's just kind of a weird assortment, an unusual assortment of colors. That's not a pro, that's not a con, it's just a, okay. Another con, I know we were doing the pros, but I'm back on the cons now. 
is that these being student grade, they get used up kind of fast, so it's kind of a false economy. And that's just never something that I am behind here on the channel because art supplies can be very expensive and people need to be able to get the most out of them. And one of the things I really like about watercolor is how economical watercolor is compared to say acrylic or oil painting where you use up literal tubes when you're painting a painting to si depending on the size of the painting. So that said though, this is still a very economical size. So it's hard to give you guys a verdict on this palette since this was a special edition. It was part of watercolor snacks. It was kind of part of a whole rather than um, an individual palette that you could purchase from Blick. Although, honestly, a lot of this is kind of standardized, like the pocket size palette is standardized against um, across their 12 color sets. The removable mixing surface is standardized. The brush, the way they do the half pans, that's all standardized. And I really like those things. But do I recommend this particular set? Mm, if you like the colors, go for it, knowing that it's a student grade set and that you might be paying a little extra for this quality of paint compared to like Mei Liang Pigments or Paul Rubens or the Maz Art. Just something to keep in mind. Now, if you're looking for a similar color assortment, i.e. really bright, saturated, fun, vibrant colors, the Core High Chroma set, I really feel like you would really like that. It is going to be more expensive because it is a professional grade watercolor, but Core's watercolors are beautiful. They're luminous and they don't use gum Arabic. And this bottle is deceptive. This is my demonstrator bottle. So it just sits out and this is, this is gum. This is gum Arabic y'all. It is turned the color of maple syrup. And this is Aquazole which usually, this is what Core uses as their binder. And usually Aquazole is even clearer than this. This is also a demonstrator bottle and uh, it has yellowed a bit over the years that it's been out, but not nearly as much. So their blues, their, their warm blues are beautiful. So if you're looking for something a little bit more high end, a little bit more professional, I really recommend the Core High Chroma set or barring that, let me see if I've got it handy. And I basically live with a ha 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 ha. Okay, so this is the core pocket palette. It is 60 bucks, so it is more expensive. I have had this forever. I have used the heck out of it and I have only refilled some colors once and I paint with this thing all the time. So very similar form factor, smaller. In fact, it's a 12 color palette. You can refill it from their tubes of paint and a little goes a long way. Some of these colors I've never refilled despite using the heck out of them because like I said, this palette a little goes a long way. I've had this palette for like, since it came out, I wanna say 2017. Um, this I think is a better version of this. Is this a special edition? No, but you get that pyrrole orange, you get that quin magenta, you get that dioxine violet, you do get a green. No, you don't get all these greens, but you can mix these greens. Um, you get a couple of neutrals, you get a Payne's Gray. To me, this is just a much more usable palette. Yes, it's twice the price, it's gonna last you more than twice as long, and I think you're gonna love it more than twice as much. So I would definitely recommend you go with this. I don't have any affiliation whatsoever with Core. They're an American owned company, and I'm, I'm kind of a supporter of that, you know. Um, but I don't have any affiliation other than I like their products and I like recommending things that I think you guys will like. So I think if you can afford to do so, spend the extra money and get the core pocket palette and you'll be a lot happier than you would have been with this particular Van Gogh palette. I need to dig around in my boxes and see if I still have the regular 12 color set. If I do, I will do a field test with both of these sets just for completionist's sake as part of our student grade showdown. But if I don't have it, I probably won't do a field test, but I might do a field test. So just keep an eye on the community tab and maybe keep an eye on my Discord server, the paint box, and I'll let you know if I can find that palette. If there's interest, if you guys really want to see me do a field test, I will do a field test with just this palette, regardless of whether I can find the other one or not. I do think I rehomed it, though, to somebody who will get more use out of it than I will, because what's the point of hoarding art supplies if you can pass them along to someone who will actually use them and who will enjoy them? So what did you guys think? Were you impressed? Do you like the color range? 
Or are you like me and you're wondering why watercolor snacks included a student grade watercolor palette and why they're selling this palette for around $44 on the watercolor snack site. I have that link down in the description for you guys because yes, you can get this set or you could save like $10 and get the vivid color set, almost the same color range, only a few colors are different over on Dick Blick. It doesn't come in a cool black box, it comes in the standard white palette, but $10 is nothing to sneeze at. So it was, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's student grade. It's okay. It's not the most interesting watercolors I've seen from Van Gogh. I really did like their dusk colors a while back. The color range is a little, and I, I keep going back to this, it's a little weird to me. It's very green and pink heavy, I think. There's no blue, which is really strange to me. And while, yeah, we can mix some browns, there's no yellow ochre, there's no quinacridone gold, there's no burnt sienna. Those are usually colors you would see in this kind of palette. So it really makes me wonder, who is this palette for? Like, what is the intended audience? What is the use case for this? Or is it just meant to be a collab with between Van Gogh and watercolor snacks? And I'm just way overthinking it. So as a an art supply reviewer and an artist, while I love a gimmick, and you guys know I love a gimmick, I also want to know what's the intended use for these things? Who are their target audience? And what do they see that audience making with these? And while this isn't a bad color selection, there's just some off choices about it or very similar colors or a lot of these colors would be easy to mix that I just can't really understand who the audience for this is. So that's part of my problem with it is if I can't figure out who something is for, it's hard for me to recommend it and sometimes I'll struggle to like it. <laughs> I tend to be very practical in that regard. And in the US, you can't easily get the individual half pans. You have to get the sets. So it's not even like I could justify this by being like, well, you could pick up a brown or a blue and add it in. You, you can't. And then it's more expensive for this set than a comparable set on Dick Blick. I think the exceptions are the two like really special, the the interference color set, which also comes in a black box, which is around $44. And I think the one of the orange sets is also more expensive, but those feel like very special editions. Whereas this is not as special to me. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm missing the point. Maybe I, I just don't get it. And that's cool. Like not every art supplies for every artist. So the colors were bright, brilliant and vivid, but so I recently reviewed the Diane W watercolors. These are dye bait. I think they, they don't disclose it. They're in half pans, but I think they're dye based watercolors that have been um, attached to a substrate so that you can paint with them. So very cheap watercolors and they are also bright and brilliant and vivid, but they fall apart when you add water. So this is the wet into wet test from the Diane W set. And there's, there's no granulation pretty, but it's like a very synthetic candy color pretty. And that's kind of how I feel about the Van Gogh watercolors as well, which do list pigment information. So they are used or should be using pigments, but it's the types of, it's the types of pigments they're choosing to use. There's a lot of just very staining, not granulating colors. So everything starts feeling, in my opinion, very synthetic kind of fake kind of candy. That's the same reason I don't really like the radiant watercolors personally. Some people do beautiful, beautiful, Nashi does beautiful art with those, but I, I can't. It looks very cheap and synthetic when I do it. It's also why I don't really like the Derwent Inktense pans. Same thing, very flat color. And that's what I'm getting from these. And that's part of why I don't really like them. If uh, Van Gogh was gonna do a special collab, it would have been really cool to go really special with it to do some of those interference colors, to do some of their dust colors, like just make it weird. Because at least if it's weird, it's unusual. And this is unusual in that the color selection is a little bit like, hmm. And honestly, I feel like this is probably some artists that they work with their preferred palette. So I'm not actually like slamming their choices or their preferences. We all have our own preferred palette. And this is just not my preferred palette. So I am being kind of harsh. But sometimes we can get so specific with our preferred palettes that it can be harder for other artists to use them. So that's like, I would have liked to have seen like a Payne's Gray in this, a Burnt Sienna in this, and at least one gran, give me some granulation here, one granulating color. But that said, I also would have 
love to see the interference colors and the dust colors in here and like let's just make it fun and weird um so it's not weird enough for me it just feels like somebody's very curated selection and while i know lots of companies partner with artists to make curated selections uh the only set i've ever bought like that is a daniel smith alvarero collab and that was because i liked the color palette not because i i'm not really familiar with his art or anything like that but i i like that color selection a lot it kind of resonated with what i do and those were in tubes rather than half pans where you can't buy additional half pans to put in those half pans. So I'm not really intending to be super harsh. I don't really have anything to gain or lose from you buying this. Um, but I like to be as honest with you guys as possible and have a chance to talk about art supplies with y'all because that's fun and I enjoy doing that. And I don't, I currently don't live near any other artists who are traditional media artists who I'm close to that I can geek out about art supplies with. So. This is my chance to kind of scratch that itch. But I just think it's kind of like a weird box. I don't really, I don't really uh, resonate with the color selection. I love greens. Green's one of my favorite colors. There's a lot of greens and I could easily mix those greens with this set. In fact, I could easily mix those greens with, so okay, very similar green, very similar green, very similar green to what's in this lineup. I can mix them with this yellow and with this, kind of turquoise blue like we don't really need hooker's green and sap green and then a thalo green like why why, why so, i love green but why so many greens we pick one do the sap green and also sap green is normally has some grit some more granulation to it than that one does these are all just kind of flat colors anyway you guys can probably tell how i feel about this so i am going to try to dig up my old van gogh palette i probably rehomed it because I do when I finish a series of things I try to be good about finding people who will enjoy them and use them even if they didn't work for me sometimes that means I donate to them to Goodwill so that someone can buy them affordably sometimes that means I give them to friends sometimes it means I give them to friends of friends sometimes I put them in little libraries often I donate them to my local library so that the kids and teens have access to the things we're talking about and can check them out and borrow them um, so I try to be really good about not holding on unless I want to keep it as like an example of something I try to be good about not holding on to things that are not gonna make me happy but they might make somebody else happy so I might have it I might not have to dig around if I don't have it though I'm not gonna turn around and rebuy it yet again I did that with the Cotman but there was a good reason for that it was very cheap and the frugal crafter recommended that even if you don't love the watercolors you can gut it because the cost of the palette alone is worth what they were charging for the palette and the paints. And I was like, yes, that makes sense. I like that. So it, it takes a pretty specific use case for me to do that. But that was, that's kind of the exception. And it means I can go back and compare the cotton watercolors against the Phoenix watercolors because I have heard, I've heard that the Phoenix watercolors are a, or I'm sorry, that cotton is made either by the same factory that makes Phoenix, which is not unusual. It's like um, commercial kitchens might make several bespoke they might make bespoke cupcakes and they might make bespoke cheese curls for different companies right because they already have many of those same materials um or it's a white label of phoenix so i can actually compare the two head to head and not that that's ever definitive but it's fun to do and i enjoy doing it and i i feel like i'm playing detective because these companies are often not entirely honest about who's making what for them so hopefully you guys will look forward to that. Hopefully you enjoyed hanging out with me while I unbox. We'd already, I have clips of me unboxing this, but it was all done in different pieces. Hopefully you enjoyed the live stream because I really enjoyed hanging out with you guys and I really miss hanging out with you guys. And the reason I haven't been doing live streams is because I have family over like literally every night and I am so burnt out. Um, and I, those of you who have been over, have been in a live stream when they were over, I, we're all ADHD. Um, they literally forget that I am live streaming and will come in and be loud and ask weird questions. So uh, I can only deal with so much at one time. And that is one thing that I'm like, no, 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 no. So, so um, I miss the live streams with y'all and hopefully we can do that soon we should be done painting the house soon so i if you're new here i am a watercolor comic artist i make the watercolor comics seven inch carol which i'll tell you about right now 
you enjoy relaxing stories, cute animals, and big adventures, I think you'll enjoy my watercolor comic, Seven Inch Kara. It follows the adventures of tiny Kara as she explores the much larger outside world, befriends kittens, and makes friends with giants. You can read it for free as a webcomic at seveninchkara.com or order your own copies from the Natto Shop. And you guys can check that out for free as a webcomic at webcomic at 7inchcare.com or you can get your own copies at 7inchcare.com slash shop. It is a wonderful way to not only get a charming watercolor comic made by yours truly, but you are also supporting the work that I do and it really means a lot to me and it makes me so happy when I can put my books into people's hands. So um, anyway, working on 7 Inch Kara has really fueled a lot of what I do here on the channel, a lot of the outreach that I do, a lot of the outreach that I used to do on the blog, and every single time I sit to record an intro or outro, everyone decides they need to start driving, even though no one was driving before. So sorry about that. But so a lot of the viewpoint I'm coming from when I review these things is either as a watercolor comic artist who's had to spend a lot of money and learn a lot of things the hard way and just wants to help you skip all the hard so you can just like get supplies you're gonna like. And as a art educator who, cause I frequently teach kids, I teach teens, I teach adults, I teach comics, watercolor, drawing, markers, all kinds of things. Um, I want them to, I always want to present to them affordable options that they're gonna like and that are gonna perform well as like a good introduction to the media because you don't have to spend a lot of money to get something that's going to allow you to make art that you like and to practice and to learn and to hone those skills. And if you've ever purchased a student grade watercolor set or student grade watercolor paper and tried to replicate the watercolor techniques that you see online and you fail to do so, even though you're following the instructions, there's a saying, and I don't like it, that it's a poor artist who blames their tools. Well, there's a lot of poor tools out there. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you guys skip the tools that are a waste of your money, a waste of your time, just not very good, and focus on things that will allow you to paint things that you like. And I try to support that by also having watercolor tutorials for a variety of skill sets, a variety of interests, and a variety of ranges from my stash buster tutorials that don't require any draftsman or drawing skills whatsoever, to my how to paint flowers series, to my watercolor comic playlist of which I have several. So hopefully if you like what you see here, you'll decide to click that subscribe button, hit that bell notification and check out some of my other playlists. I'll have some of them linked down in the description below. So hopefully you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. I enjoyed hanging out with you. Hopefully you found this helpful, useful and informative and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon. So one more hopefully, hopefully this was helpful in helping you guys make art a habit. And huge ginormous thanks to my amazing patrons on Patreon. It is their support that makes videos like this possible. We don't have any other kinds of sponsorships. I put my money into this and they put their money into this and together we make art supply reviews and tutorials. So if you like what I do and you want to help me continue to do it, you can join me at patreon.com slash So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I hope to see y'all again soon.